Well, welcome back to part two of our interview with Joshua Becker. Today we're gonna to talk about all of the questions related to spouses or other loved ones who aren't on the same page as us with minimalism, and also what to do if we live with people that just really like their stuff. We're also gonna give away a couple copies of his latest book at the very end. All right, so let's talk about spouses because this is probably the question that comes up the most if either uh, my spouse isn't on board, they, they're worried that I'm getting rid of stuff that I'm just gonna buy again, they see keeping stuff as being prepared for the future, or they have hobbies or sport, sport likes that cause them to keep lots of stuff. What do wow, I do? Wow, <laughs> those are all good ones. <laughs> they're all different, but I think oh, they all come down to this. To... No, I've never heard them broken up. Do you know? Okay. Can you do them again? What was the first one? What if my spouse is saying, you're going to have to rebuy all this stuff that you're getting rid of. It's just a kick or something like that. Yeah. So that might be a legitimate one, right? I mean, well, I, if you... It depends what their track record is with you. Yeah, right? exactly. Right? If, you've, if you've lived your life that way, mm -hmm. buying a lot of stuff, Sure. Um, and now you want to get rid of it, I... It seems like a, a natural response right. that they might have. And mm -hmm. I don't know how you overcome that other than build a new track record, yeah. right? Like it just takes time, time of not build trust again, not filling back up again mm -hmm. before that, before that starts to take root. I've never even heard that. that good job good guys. We found that that is a good one. question. Uh, good I would. Uh, so if I was the spouse and my spouse was worried about me doing that, I would I would say, yeah, you know what, you're right. Um, mm -hmm. Especially if it's, if it's well founded. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what, I, I have done some of that in the past, but I'm I'm making a change and okay. just watch. I'm not gonna. You you help me. You you hold me accountable. I'm I'm yeah, not gonna good. fill back up again. Yeah. Okay. So what if they view keeping stuff as being prepared for the future? Um, I think generally when it comes to spouses, there aren't a lot of easy. Right, easy answers. Yeah. Um, I think that we, we we try to frame the conversation in the right way. We try to find uh, ways that they would resonate with minimalism. So what drew you to minimalism mm -hmm. might be different than what would draw your spouse to right. it. So help them think through, okay, if we own less, they could do more of this or that. Um, so help them see it that way. Mm -hmm. uh, have a, a, a reasoned you know, dinner or coffee where you're talking about, like yeah. let's talk about our lives and where we're going and what we want to do. Um, always lead by example first. It's always easier to see everyone else's clutter than it is to see your yeah. own. Um, but you need to start with your own things. And uh, patience and humility and mm -hmm. love. I got an email one time from someone who said, my wife, my husband doesn't want to get rid of any stuff. Should I divorce him? And like I wrote back as quickly as I could. Like, no, <laughs> no, no right? Like, like the goal of this shouldn't yeah. be to to tear you apart. Like the yeah. goal of this should be to bring you together. Yeah. Um, and so focus on the good things that they do bring into the relationship and mm -hmm. the, the good that they do bring, um, how you're being challenged in this area, even if it's different than them. So what if our spouse is hanging onto stuff either because uh, like sporting equipment or hobbies that they have that take up lots of space? Um, <clears throat> How do you convince your spouse to get rid of their hobby stuff, huh? Probably, um, I would say this probably applies if maybe they're not using it. I think most of us would say, yeah, if somebody is using something consistently, we wouldn't expect them to get yeah. rid of it, but maybe they think they're going to use it yeah. and are hanging on to it. Uh, I would start with making sure you're getting rid of your hobby stuff first uh, <laughs> before you're dressing them. Yeah. Um, hobbies can be difficult for anybody. Sure. Even, uh, if they don't want to become minimalist, then um, addressing their hobby stuff is going to be even more difficult. Generally speaking, if someone wants to minimize their hobby things, uh, some principles to think in mind are like, what hobbies do I actually do? Which ones do I actually pursue? Uh, where did I get into this mindset that I needed more stuff in order to do the hobby better? Sure. Uh, sometimes when you get like to outdoor mm -hmm. and sporting stuff, we, we just collect more and more yeah. things. Uh, and it almost becomes a burden to go right. do the hobby than it is, you know, when yep. we just had a, you know, a fishing pole and uh, a couple lures as opposed to, you know, boxes right. of it and shelves and shelves of camping and outdoor gear. Um, so thinking through which ones are actually used, uh, if there are old hobbies that 
served a purpose in a certain season of life, but you've moved on to, to new passions and, and new hobbies and recognizing that um, you can get rid of some of the some of the old things. Yeah, that's good. I, I just heard from my gal too who said she used to love to scrapbook and she couldn't figure out why she wasn't doing it anymore. And she's like, I had this whole room of stuff. And then she's like, I remember that I actually enjoyed it more when all of my stuff fit in a little suitcase and mm -hmm. I'd go do it with my friends compared to when I had a room dedicated to yeah. it. So, And there is sometimes where we... Uh, we like the idea of doing a hobby more than we actually enjoy doing the hobby. <laughs> uh, Dave Bruno wrote about this in his book, The 100 Thing Challenge, okay. um, where he was trying to get down to 100 things. And mm -hmm. he found the hardest thing to get rid of was his woodworking tools okay. and equipment, uh, even though he never did woodworking. <laughs> but he said it, it was... It was this realization that I always wanted to be a woodworker, okay. but I'm just not a woodworker. Is it like a death of a dream is yeah. how he described sure. it. Um, but he said, once I got rid of it, I was able to appreciate who I was and what I did enjoy more because mm -hmm. I wasn't thinking about all that other stuff that I had that I wasn't using. That's good. All right, so I think uh, one final question that I'd like to tie into your new book, The Minimalist Home. I live with hoarders, what do I do? Um, but I think kind of tying in with the spouse thing, I think a lot of times our spouses just maybe, they don't understand the draw for us to minimalism. And, you know, we've thought about how to, you know, simplify our house, simplify our parenting and different things. And so uh, Tom and I have actually been, well, I've started listening to The Minimalist Home and Tom's going to listen to it as well. And it has been so inspiring. But I think what's so great about it is you have so many stories interspersed throughout the book about the impact that it has made on families. And so it's incredibly inspiring. And so what would you say to someone who says, I live with hoarders, what do I do? Um, I, I try not to mess around with that. Um, if, if it's legitimately okay, with I'm, a hoarder. Okay, I'm guessing okay. they're probably saying it with I just live people that are okay. either messy and like, okay. let's, yeah, let's not maybe take <laughs> okay. it that extreme. <laughs> okay. People that well, don't if, value If they are, okay, living. if it is, uh, <laughs> if, if you do live with a hoarder, I, I would, I would look for professional help. There's, there's books yeah. on it. Um, and, uh, really, cause you'll need more help than than what you can offer. Then you can give. Yeah. <laughs> you can give. Um, but, uh, but I just live with someone who's really messy and yeah. has a lot of stuff mm -hmm. and can't see the benefit of it. Do the best that you can. Mm -hmm. um, handling your own stuff. You, you, look for, uh, you look for points of agreement, I think. Okay. So, hey, can we all agree that there's too much stuff in this closet? Can we agree that it would be nice to park the car in the garage? Like, if you can get mm -hmm. a little movement towards it, then... It doesn't give you license to get rid of all of their stuff, sure. but I think it gives you license to say, okay, I found some things in this closet. You know, is it okay if we, if we get rid of that? Yeah. Um, I think that that's helpful. I've, I have gone so far as to recommend people look for like a space in their home that they can create mm -hmm. as their own. If okay. it's really a mess everywhere, mm -hmm. hey, can I at least have this room where sure. I can create, you mm -hmm. know, a reading space and um, feel a little free from clutter? Um, Humility, knowing that, you know, I'm, I'm probably not perfect in the relationship either. Like there's some probably some things that they wish that they could change about me yeah. that, that I'm not budging on. I think all those things are helpful to, to keep things in perspective. But ultimately, I, I think minimalism wins out in the long run. Like in the long run, the benefits of owning less far outweigh the benefits mm -hmm. of accumulating more and more uh, with no end in sight yeah. and so maybe it takes years for them to get there but yeah. I, I think uh, over the long run minimalism wins out and what would you say I know a lot of people have been watching you know tightening up with Marie Kondo and what would you say if the fear is I'm worried that if I get started I'm gonna have everything pulled out I'm gonna have all my laundry you know my clothes out on my bed and I'm not gonna get finished and I'm gonna end up with a bigger mess than what I started with well um it's a possibility. Yeah. Um, I, I, I tend to prefer a, a different approach than than she does. However, yeah. well, let me say this first and foremost. I'm for anyone who helps people own less yes. stuff. Right. And, uh, different processes work for different people, mm -hmm. and uh, Marie Kondo's approach has proven to be very helpful yeah, for absolutely. a lot of people. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I, I have no problem recommending mm -hmm. people do it. Uh, I, I try to take people room by room through their yeah. home. The Millis home takes people yeah. room by room from easiest to hardest. Yeah. Um, gaining victories in easy spaces, noticing the benefits, and then being motivated uh, to go to the next harder space yeah. in their home, I mean, which good. I think works as well. 
But it's, uh, yeah, it takes resolve. Um, it takes, I think, an expectation that there's going to be that messy moment where everything sure. is out on it the bed. It gets worse first. <laughs> and, and just knowing that being resolved to, to push yeah. through it and, and know that the end isn't a big mess on your bed. The, the bed, you know, the, the result is a mm -hmm. uh, decluttered and tidied home. And I know there was questions too about people that say they don't have a lot of energy to put towards it or they get started and they feel a little defeated. And I think that would be my recommendation too would be to purchase your book or download it on Audible and just start listening because I think the stories in it are going to propel you forward and even the difficult decisions that you might have to make along the way. I think it's just going to, it's really going to keep the, the end goal in front of you by, by reading the book. And so I think you'll, you'll find that very I appreciate inspiring. that. And every project can be broken up into smaller, right. into smaller steps. Mm -hmm. Every room can be broken into smaller steps. Um, so you don't have to look at a whole room and think I've got to do this. Yeah. Or even, I know Marie has you bring all the clothes in. Um, I shouldn't, so I shouldn't say anything about it. But I, no, maybe, no, I, think, I, like, I think you could start with, let me just get some things out of this closet yeah. first before I pile everything on the bed yeah. um, and break it into We are going to give away a couple copies of your new book, The Minimalist Home. So uh, be sure to leave a comment below. Tell us what victories you've had in your home or other areas that you're struggling with. So leave that down below. You'll be entered to win one of the books. And then we'll also have the link below where you can download it for free on Audible as well. So whatever works best for you, we'll put that down below. Well, of course, a huge thank you to Joshua Becker for allowing us to visit last week. You can find links to his blog and his YouTube channel down below, as well as how you can purchase a copy of his book. There's also a link to listen to it for free on Audible. You can have it checked out for 30 days, so you'll find that down below if you want to listen to it. So anyone who comments will be entered to win, and we'll select the winner next Tuesday. You can find all the giveaway details in the description down below. But thank you so much for watching. We'd love it if you'd subscribe so that we can keep in touch and you'll be notified when new videos about family minimalism are released. A thumbs up is the best compliment that you can give us, and we will definitely look forward to visiting with you again soon.